This next one is called Sing and Be Happy. I hope to join us on the chorus. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll be happy today. Press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Join us, sing and you'll be happy today. Press along to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the way, He is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song, sing and be happy today. Off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust Him each day, then we'll have pleasures untold. Sing and you'll be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in Him who leadeth the way, He is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him in song. Sing and be happy today. Sing and be happy today. Sing and be happy today. Thanks for singing with us.
Walk by faith and not by sight, knowing if we just hang on, everything's gonna be all right if we trust in what we cannot see, we will be safe if we walk by faith. times when we're not whole, living in the shadows, in the dark night of our soul, with every prayer we see healing, we pray for comfort, for strength and for peace, we walk by faith, not by sight, knowing if we just hang on, everything's gonna be all right if we trust in what we cannot see, we will be safe if we walk by faith. We all have times we've lost our way. Sunshine, every day's a shade of gray. No more dreams and no more tears. All we have is hopelessness, heartaches, and fears. What do we feel? We just can't take it anymore. Just hang on, everything's gonna be alright if we trust in what we cannot see, we will be safe. cannot see, we will be safe if we walk by
Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Leap of Faith Church on this Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to um, to all of the fathers who might might be listening to our online worship service. And I know that many are remembering their fathers today. We remember along with you. Um, Virgie Holbrook, the pastor of the church, if you haven't checked in yet with your name, please use the comment column to do that. That comment column is useful to you in all kinds of ways. The giving button at the top. Now you can text to give as well, of course, 903-225-8774. Or you can find your Thursday evening newsletter and click the PayPal button there or on our website, mylofc.org. Or you can write a check. If you want to support ministry at Leap of Faith with a financial offering, all those are perfectly fine. Uh, quite frankly, the easiest thing for you to do is to click that button at the top of the comment column. I already mentioned checking in with your name. And down at the bottom of the comment column, there's a form that you can fill out, a place where you can leave your email address if you're not already receiving our newsletter. It comes out on Thursday evening. Be happy to add you to our, to our mailing list. And if you have a prayer request that's kind of on the confidential side, something you don't want to put in the comment column, use that form at the bottom. I'm the only one who sees it. I'd be happy to add your joy or your concern to my, to my personal prayer list without sharing it with anyone else at all. We have announcements this morning. This very week, we're looking forward to Heyday Vacation Bible School on Friday night, Saturday night, and on worship next Sunday morning. Friday night, 4 to, four to 9. Saturday night, 4 to 9. That involves a dinner and games and visiting and uh, all kinds of stuff for kids. But adults are welcome as well. You don't have to have a child to come to Vacation Bible School. Everything is free. The easiest way to register is to go to mylofc.org, our website, scroll down just a tiny little bit and click on the cow. If you don't want to do that, you can call call Summer, call me at 903-821-4505. We'll be happy to fill out a registration form for you. If you live in the area and would like to come, we would love to have you. Also, the women's group meets on June 21st at 1 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Again, if you're in the area and just want a time of fellowship with, with other women, you would be welcome to come. Our Sunday school is fully restarting on July 3rd with classes for all ages, and you can find out more about that in our newsletter. Um, and there's also always information on our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. If you haven't been to that page and liked it after the worship service, I encourage encourage you to do that. Well, let's worship and let's start our time of worship together today, this Father's Day, with a prayer. Our God, you are like a father to us, a father wise and merciful, a father ever present, a father forgiving and strong, a father we can turn to, look up to. We come to you now as your children, God, trusting in your love. And now we continue to worship with music from the Leap of Faith Band.
Leap of Faith Church, as you probably know, is an independent church. We're not connected with any local church or with any denomination. If anyone asks you what it is that Leap of Faith Church believes, um, I encourage you to answer. We embrace the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to remember those words with me now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, trusting in God's mercy, I invite you to join me in prayer as we confess our sin together. Our God, you've kept on loving us when our love for you has faltered. You've kept on loving us when our love for each other faded. You've kept on loving us when we couldn't even love ourselves. You've been steadfast and true, God, and we have not. Forgive us. Unite us, unite us in love and swerving, love for you, love for others, love for ourselves. Please, God, hear this prayer, as well as our silent prayers of confession. Will you hear this good news? In the name of Jesus Christ, you're forgiven. And so am I. And now joys, and now concerns. Let's see what's on the list. You know what I'm going to start with, no doubt. I ask you every week to pray for those who lead our world, those who lead our country, our communities, our churches. And please, please ask God to lead all these leaders in taking meaningful action in dealing with tragic situations the world over. A number of health-related concerns. Please pray for Lisa, Linda, Clarence, Cindy, Tony, Marilyn, Dean, Dina, Dax, Sue, Johnny, Carol, Ari, Anthony, Betty Ann, Fidel, Miriam, Steve, Billy, Jewel, Pat, Dassey, and Laurie. I also ask you every week to pray for those who serve, in the who serve in the military of our country. Please be faithful to do that, especially those who are dear, uh, dear to Leap of Faith Church. Tyler, Jessica, Jordan, Devin, Clayton. If you have a service member in your family and, and that person isn't on that list and you'd like them to be, why don't you just use the co comment column to let me know that person's name now, and I'll be happy to add him, to add her to this list. Um, we have birthday, a birthday this week, Dylan Ward on June 24th. And if you have a birthday or know someone who does, the comment column is there for you to let me know that we need to add another birthday to our joys. I'm thankful today that Paul Watkins, the assistant lay leader here at Leap of Faith Church, will be, will be preaching his willingness to do that. Let my family take, uh, take a few days off this week, uh, take the kids to tubing uh, down in Central Texas. That is something that we uh, have wanted to do for a while and will long remember. And, 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 and Paul's willingness to preach is, is truly a gift that enabled us to, to do that. I ask your prayers for summer and for all who are helping get ready for Vacation Bible School. At the end of this week, I ask your prayers as I do each week for the Leap of Faith Band, for Brad Nixon, for Summer Holbrook, who, who produce this worship service. Um, as I said last Sunday, we are praying intentionally last week and this week for Vacation Bible School, for the restart of Sunday School here at Leap of Faith. I hope that you'll include these ministries in your personal prayers. And now let's pray. We remember, God, that Jesus teaches that little children and big children, too, are welcome in his presence. We're asking you this morning that all the children and all the adults who will be part of Heyday Vacation Bible School this week and the reopening of Leap of Faith Sunday School the, the next week after that will we'll begin to feel how deeply Jesus loves them and how deeply this church loves them, too. 
We're asking God that through the ministries of Leap of Faith, all who participate in those ministries in any way will through them grow in grace and in wisdom and in determination to follow Jesus and to lift his cross up high so that all the world might come to know him as Lord and as Savior. We're praying, God, especially for those who teach. Fill them with your Holy Spirit so that they may in all ways embody Christ's love for those you place into their guidance, into their care. Give them a sense of your divine calling so that they might come to truly understand the significance, the importance of their leadership. We pray, our God, that you will bless our Vacation Bible School, our Sunday School, and all our future endeavors that through them we might unerringly glorify you. God, hear our prayer for the ministries of this church. And God, on this Father's Day, hear as well the silent prayer each one of us lifts now for our own Father, whether he was the best Father that could possibly be or more subject to human frailty, whether he's living or whether he has gone on now to live with you. Here as well our prayers for all those who celebrate joys, all those who experience concerns, and hear us now as we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Uh, this morning we're reading from uh, the Message uh, Bible. And uh, it's uh, the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. You'll probably recognize this story uh, very early in the, in the message here. Then he said, talking about Jesus, then he said, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he'd gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to feel it. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs from the pig, uh, pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. And then he got right up, and he went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounding, he ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. And the son started his speech. Father, I have sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening to him. Uh, he was calling to the servants. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and put sandals on his feet. And then get a prize-winning heifer and roast it. We're going to have a feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And so they began to have a wonderful time. All this time, the older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in, and as he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked what was going on. And he told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast, barbecued beef, because uh, he has him home safe and sound. So the other brother stomps off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't hear it. The son said, Look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you a moment of grief. But you have, have you ever thrown a party for me and for my friends? 
And then this son of yours, who has thrown away your money on prostitutes, shows up, and you uh, go with an all-out feast. And his father said, you don't understand. You're with me all the time, and everything that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time, and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead, and he's alive. He was lost, and now he's found. I ask God to bless the reading of his word. So before we get started, let's talk definitions. We, we know this is the story of the prodigal son. Prodigal means wasteful or extravagant. Dissipated means overindulging in sensual pleasures. So think drunken debauchery kind of things. And with that out of the way, I will say that today is a special day. We honor our fathers and the father figures in our lives. And personally, I, I know I wouldn't be anywhere near the man that I am today without my dad -o. Have you ever, have you ever wanted the best for someone that you love and they just won't listen or accept any help from you? It's frustrating to say the least. I think that's how the father in this story of the prodigal son must have felt. And I also think that's sometimes how our Heavenly Father might feel as He looks at us. The story of the prodigal son could, could go down many avenues. We can talk about the adventures of the, the prodigal son. We could talk about the faithfulness of the father. And I kind of want to hit both of those points. The father didn't lose hope, and that should give us hope. So let's start our conversation with this brat of a kid that was wasteful, made poor life choices, and walked away from a loving family and a secure future. It was all about him. Does it sound familiar? It does to me. People sometimes get pretty far away from God, and all too often they just don't care. It's all about them. I've been there. This young man decided that his life at home was awful. He had had enough. He pulled a Popeye. He had had all he could stand. He couldn't stand any more. And he wanted to go live in the real world. Nothing earth-shattering about that, right? It happens every day to this day. But he wanted what he thought his father owed him. And he was going to take it and do what he wanted. And by the way, what he thought his father owed him, according to Jewish custom and Jewish law, was that the older son would get two-thirds of the estate of the father. The younger son would get one-third. Now, a lot of commentators would see the request that this younger son is making uh, for his share of the inheritance a little early is kind of insolent. Kind of maybe even wishing that his father was dead. I don't think that he was. Um, I don't think he was wishing his father dead. I really don't think that he was thinking at all. So the father agrees. He gives the boy a third of his estate. And then the boy goes out and lives it up. His actions uh, seem to be a little short-sighted, though, as we quickly see. Things just didn't work out too well for him. He squanders his inheritance and eventually becomes an indentured servant with the degrading job of looking after pigs, even envying the slop that they eat. Now recall in Judaism um, that pigs aren't exactly kosher, if you'll excuse my pun. So as my grandmother would say, he's really got himself in a fix. He's lost everything. His money, his home, his relationships, all gone. He has a lack of basic resources and is starving. This kid is broke and broken. He reached the point we all eventually reached. He realized that the world isn't full of unicorns and rainbows. Life is tough. And you can make it even harder on yourself if you live irresponsibly. 
But at this point, he also remembers that what he had at home really wasn't so bad. His father and family are looking better than they ever have. Even the servants of his father lived better than he was at the time. So he heads home. And I'm sure he rehearsed his speech a hundred times on that long walk. But upon his return, his father's waiting for him. He sees him coming. And he treats this young man with generosity far more than he had any right to expect. The kid didn't even have time to recite his speech to his dad and beg for his mercy. And he was already getting clean clothes and a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And then he's treated to a truly Texan-style party of barbecue beef. The Jewish philosopher Philo wrote, Parents often do not lose thought for their wastrel children. In the same way, God, too, takes thought also for those who live a misspent life, thereby giving them time for reformation and also keeping within the bounds of His own merciful nature. The last few verses of the parable summarize the story um, kind of in accordance with Jewish teachings uh, of two ways of behaving. The way of life, obedience, the way of death sin. And this also just happens to be the last of three parables about loss and redemption that Jesus tells after the Pharisees and religious leaders of the time accuse him of welcoming in and eating with sinners. I don't have to spell it out for you though. I know. The Father's joy described in this parable reflects God's divine joy. The boundless mercy of God, His refusal to, to put a limit on His grace for us. It's an amazing example of love. The story shows that love in a simple form, but it's the love that God has for us. He has His arms wide open for us. He's ready to, to make us a part of the family again. And he's truly a, a loving God, and he, he desires to see us come home. He leaves the door open. And he keeps the porch light on so that everybody has a chance to come to their senses and just come home. I think it's at our lowest point that God does His best work. We may be the child that needs to return, or we may be the parents of children that have gone astray. But God does His best when we're at our lowest. He does more because we open ourselves up to believing that He can do the impossible for us and, and just make things work out the way they're supposed to work out. So we come to our senses. God wraps His arms around us. And He says, welcome home. I don't know about you, but I never want to leave again. Thank you for allowing me to share this message today. May the God of all comfort bless and keep you. Thank you for coming to worship at Leap of Faith Church today. I'm so glad that we uh, have this opportunity, this, this way of worshiping together online so that even if you live at some distance or even if your health is fragile, we can spend this time together each Sunday. If you're not already a member of the church, I'd love to receive you as a member of the church. Um, that's, that's easily done. Just let me know that it's your, your intention, your will. You can call me 903-821-4505. You know, you can call me for help, um, whether you're a member of the church or not. But if it would have meaning to you uh, to align yourself formally as a member with Leap of Faith, it would certainly have meaning to me and to the church. We would be glad to welcome you. Just let me know that's what you'd like to do. I remind you of the comment column. You know, if you came late, please, please leave your name over here in the middle of the column. It's not a requirement by any means, but it is awfully nice to see who's worshiping with us. So in the middle of that comment, names at the top, the giving button. Again, the easiest way to give to support ministry at Leap of Faith and down at the bottom, a form where you can leave your email address to receive our newsletter, along with make any prayer requests that may be more confidential in nature. Uh, to find out more about the church, mylofc.org. And how do you register for Vacation Bible School? 
One, one way, the easiest way, is to go to mylofc.org, scroll down just a tiny bit until you see the information about Heyday Vacation Bible School. There's a cow there. Just click on the cow, and a registration form should, should pop right up. It's very, very easy. If you'd rather not do that, give us a call, 903-821-4505. We'll fill out a form for you over the phone. That's also, also easy. And keep checking the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page. There's all kinds of information that shows up there regularly. And now again, let's pray as we close. God, our Father, do not waver, do not falter, do not fail us. Stand beside us, faithful for all eternity. We are leaning on your presence. We are counting on your peace. And we're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't leave yet. The Leap of Faith Band has more music for you. I know some of you are, are very devoted to the music of the Leap of Faith Band, as am I. So stick around and, and enjoy that music. Thank you for worshiping at Leap of Faith this morning. I hope you'll be back next Sunday morning. And during the week, please call if there's any way I can be of help to you. 903-821-4505. Now go in peace. I'm so glad you're here at Leap of Faith Church. I hope you'll invite your friends as we continue to worship. Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be a song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Side by side, draw the circle.